everyone, my name is Marie and welcome to my talk called a medley of front-end and back-end performance testing. Before I start with my talk, I want to tell you a story first. This story is about Overcook. I've been playing this game with my 5-year-old daughter and if you're not too familiar with Overcook, it's a cooperative game where you have to pass different unusual kitchen layouts and serve as much food as possible to customers. When the game starts, it's still pretty normal. Orders are flowing in nicely and you're getting tips because you're getting sushi orders served on time. As the game gets harder and you get more orders than expected, the kitchen is now overwhelmed and without proper coordination and teamwork and place, the kitchen is now on fire. You're also not getting tips anymore and you've got hungry customers waiting impatiently for their food. Because the kitchen can't keep up with the overflowing orders from customer, the whole kitchen is now on fire. Of course, this is very dramatic but ultimately, you get the picture. The customers are very unhappy, you're getting negative tips, and the kitchen is such a mess that you can't even cook a single potato. Going back to my topic of performance testing, Imagine you are trying to buy some items during Black Friday or Cyber Monday sales. You found an item that you really like, but suddenly, the website that you were using has crashed. It can't keep up with the overwhelming requests from different users simultaneously. This is a very common phenomenon during Black Friday sales. You can see in this example graph as well that during the peak times of Black Friday sales, the response times are significantly higher as opposed to normal periods. This has then resulted to response times errors that can break your website. Most of the time, the response from companies is to buy more servers, thinking that this will fix their performance problems, but this could end up costing you more money. A better investment is if you understand, test, monitor, and make performance improvements to your internal application. Now, let's get to the more serious part of this talk. In order for us to make sure that our users have a positive user experience, we need to do performance testing. Performance testing is the practice of measuring and evaluating how your system responds under certain conditions. When you think of performance testing, we are concerned about the speed, reliability, and stability of the application that we are testing. With performance testing, there is often a misconception that it's all about load testing. Performance testing is the umbrella term for any type of performance test, while load testing is just one type of performance testing. In a nutshell, load testing checks how your application is behaving if it's been exposed to a heavy number of concurrent virtual users sending multiple requests at a given time. Within load testing, there's also different variations such as stress testing, soak testing, or spike testing. Performance testing is typically divided into two areas. We have the front-end or client-side performance, which is aimed at testing how fast a user can see the web responses instantly. It is concerned with the end-user experience of an application, which usually involves a browser. Front-end performance testing has metrics that are distinct from back-end performance testing. Example metrics could be how long did it take for the browser to render the entire page or how long did it take for the page to be fully interactive. Then, on the other hand, we have back-end or server-side performance testing, which is aimed at ensuring that when multiple requests are sent from different users simultaneously, your back-end should be able to handle the load accordingly. Example metrics could be how long did it take for a response to come back from a specific request or how many failed requests did we encounter? So as you can see, performance testing is not just about load testing. With different types of performance testing, you might wonder if there is a priority as to which one is more important. The answer, as with everything, is that it depends. It always is. If we revisit the golden rule of web performance, it states that 80 to 90% of the load time of a web page or application is spent in the front end, while 10 to 20% is spent in the back end. You can see in this image, which I took from Steve Souther's blog, that the average front-end time is significantly higher as opposed to the back-end timings. 
if we are following this golden rule and you want to make some performance improvements, it's always a great idea to start on the front end and make small recommendations to your team. Performance testing on the front end is also much closer to our users' experience. However, the golden rule of web performance is not always necessarily accurate. If you have a lot of traffic arriving at your website, the front-end response time can remain roughly similar. But once your back-end struggles with the increased concurrency, the back-end time will grow exponentially. Front-end performance testing is executed on the client side and is therefore limited in scope. They don't provide enough information about your entire application. Backend performance testing is really useful when it comes to catching any performance bottlenecks when your application servers have been exposed to high levels of load. At the same time, front-end performance testing can catch issues related to browsers only, which can be skipped entirely from the protocol level. This is why a mixture of both is key. Moving on, I want to talk a bit about performance testing tools because there is a variety of tools out there that are available to support you with your performance testing needs. From a front-end perspective, tools such as Lighthouse, Google PageSpeed, SiteSpeed.io, WebPageTest, and even your developer tools can help. Other testing tools such as Playwright and Cypress can also offer ways to measure front-end performance. Then, if we go to the back-end tools, there's also JMeter, K6, Gatling, Taurus, Locus, and also Artillery, just to name a few. These tools predominantly perform performance testing, most commonly load testing on a protocol level. So, as you can see, you would need a combination of different tools to test your front-end and back-end. But what if there is a single tool that you can use for both? What if there is a tool that can simulate a browser-based test with a protocol-level test so you can understand how the front-end behaves during various performance events? This is where XK6 Browser comes in. XK6 Browser is an extension to K6, which brings browser automation and end-to-end -end web testing to K6 while supporting core K6 features. It adds browser-level scripting APIs to interact with real browsers and collect front-end metrics as part of your K6 tests. With XK6 Browser, this gives you the ability to measure how your front-end is behaving during certain event, which would be difficult to catch from the protocol level. XK6 Browser, similarly with K6, is actually written in Go, but the tests are written in JavaScript. It's also great news for Playwright users because XK6 Browser aims to provide rough compatibility with the Playwright API. XK6 Browser is still in its very early stages, so it's been created as a K6 extension, which means that it's not included as part of K6 core yet. To get started with XK6 Browser, you need to install XK6 first via Go. Then, you have to build a custom version of K6 with XK6 Browser binary added to it. Since K6 tests are written in JavaScript, there will be some familiarity already. To demo a really simple test, I just want to visit a test URL. To create that, first I need to import Chromium from XK6 Browser. At the moment, XK6 Browser only supports Chromium-based browsers, but we also have plans to support Firefox and WebKit. Next, I have my export default function, which is our virtual user code. Anything that's inside the default function will be executed by a virtual user again and again, depending on your configuration. For now, this will only be executed once. I'm telling Chromium to launch a browser, and since I want to see the browser, I'm passing in headless as false. Then, we're telling browser to create a new page. To visit our test URL, I'm using the page.goto method, passing in my test URL, and then wait until the network is idle. Finally, I'm just closing both my page and my browser. To run a test in XK6 Browser, we just need to use XK6 Browser followed by the command run and then the file name. Let's see that in action by typing XK6 Browser run followed by the file that I want to run. In this example, I've saved it on a folder called examples. You can see that it has opened up my Chrome browser and it has visited the page. 
when that's finished, Kasich prints out a summary of a bunch of performance testing metrics. Apart from the usual HTTP-specific metrics that K6 already tracks, there are a few browser performance metrics that are now also added, such as browser DOM loaded, first contentful paint, first meaningful paint, and so on. For each of these metrics, you get an overview as to what the average time is, the max response time, or even the 99th percentile, among others. This gives you an insight into how performant your website is from a browser perspective. Let's make the script a bit more complex by automating a login functionality. Let's say that I want to automate typing in my login name and password, and then checking that I have logged in successfully. Let's launch an instance of Chromium and notice that apart from the headless option, I'm also passing in an option called slow-mo, which slows down input actions and navigation by the specified time. Next, I'm creating a new page. I'm visiting the same test URL again and waiting until the network is idle. After that, I'm using page.locator, which can also be interchanged to page that dollar sign to interact with the given selectors and perform additional actions to type the username and password. Now, for some context, a lot of the operations in K6 are synchronous. However, playwright operations are async, so we're also trying to support async operations. Since clicking the submit button will load up a different page, I also need to wait for that page and use page.waitfornavigation because the page won't be ready until the navigation completes. Once all the promises have been resolved, we can check that it has loaded the new page by asserting that the text content is equivalent to what we expect. Then finally, I'm closing the page and the browser. To see that in action, let's run our tests. Similar to the previous execution, performance metrics are also reported, but there is also a check here indicating that the assertion pass. Now, the real power of XK6 browser shines when it's combined with the existing features of K6. XK6 browser allows for mixing browser level and protocol level APIs. You can have a scenario where you want to simulate the bulk of your traffic with protocol level scenarios, and at the same time, you can have one or two virtual users accessing your website on a browser level to collect front end metrics such as as DOM content loaded or first contentful paint. To see that in code first, I need to import the relevant modules from K6 as well as XK6 browser. Next, I'm configuring the behavior of my test using options, which is built in with K6 already. Here, I can run two scenarios concurrently. My first scenario is for my browser test, while my second scenario is for my protocol test. I'm using the constant we use executor for both scenarios, which will introduce a constant number of virtual users to execute as many iterations as possible for a specified amount of time. In this example, I've set one VU for my browser test while I have 20 VUs for my protocol test. Next, I have my messages function, which is my browser test. And I also have my news function, which refers to my protocol test. It's all in one script. And this allows for greater collaboration amongst teams because if you have backend teams already using K6, frontend teams can collaborate more with them and be more effective when doing performance testing. Here is a sample output from the test run. And you can see both scenarios are executed concurrently with various performance metrics reported. Now, since I started my talk talking about Overcook, I would also like to end this with Overcook. Now, if we want to have better kitchen coordination, handle high amounts of customer orders, make sure that we don't have customers waiting impatiently for their food, and also provide the best customer experience, you need to have the right blend of front-end and back-end performance testing. Just some final words before I finish. Since XK6 Browser is still a fairly new tool, we need help from the community, so you're most welcome to try it out and give us feedback. 
do check out our GitHub project, have a look at our examples, and play around with the tool. That's it for my talk at TestJS Summit. I hope you learned something new today, and thank you so much for listening. Yeah.